I have never been more excited to replay a game that I have already beaten this year. But this game is just that damn good. In my opinion. And this is absolutely one of my favorite games of all time. I'm so excited. <laughs> oh, dude. I am so happy that this game is finally on PC. And holy crap, this intro screen is loud. Uh, so let me talk on this screen. But yeah, I'm so freaking happy this game is finally on PC. Um, this is the PC version. Uh, basically, if you guys don't know, I guess I'll introduce myself first. H hello to anyone who does not know me already. My name is Luna Cyclone. I am going to be doing a full 100%, well, I don't want to say 100%, but a full walkthrough of the definitive version of the game, which is now out on PS4, Xbox One, and Steam. Now, this version of the game was out on the Switch a year ago. That is how I played the game. I've played the Switch version before. I'm just very happy it's now on PC. I can now make a playthrough of the game. I don't have a capture card or anything like that. Um, I love this game. I didn't do everything I could have done in the Switch version. I'm going to be showing off all the exclusive content. Um, and yeah, I'm very, very, very excited to get into this game once again. Now, if just real quick, and I don't want to bother you too much, if you are new, we're trying to make the push to 100 subscribers, so I would really appreciate if you are new and you did subscribe. And yeah, we are going to be doing a full walkthrough of this game. And no, Persona fans, don't worry. Um, Persona 4 is not being cancelled. I'm still playing it. Check out my update video. I posted my new schedule. Persona's coming back on Monday, so don't you worry. But, uh, yeah. I think I know enough about this game to make a good walkthrough, and we are going to be playing with some draconian quest settings, which I'll go talk about in a little second here. I did play the demo, uh, only because if you play the demo on Steam or PS4 or whatever, you actually get a bonus of three skill seeds if you beat it. Which is cool, but I'm not going to use those three skill seeds um, in this playthrough at the start. I'm not going to be using them for a while, uh, because I want to sh like, if you didn't be the demo, then you're going to be down three skill seeds. So I want to show you what it's, you know, I'm not going to just have that advantage over you if you're going to be playing along with me. Um, okay, so here, here's the Draconian quest settings. So they allow you to put some restrictions in place. They can re be removed at church anytime you like, so... 
you know, you should definitely not be afraid to add some of these draconian quest settings. Now, when I first played the game, I didn't pick any draconian quest settings. Uh, and that's perfectly fine. If you want to play this game for the first time and not have any of these restrictions, that's perfectly valid. However, I am going to be playing with all enemies are super strong. This is basically the hard mode version of the game. Um, every enemy you encounter will be tougher than usual, making your quest a true test of your combat skills. Only harder warriors need to apply. So this is a must, in my opinion, for at least for a second playthrough. I played the demo on this, and the early game, let me tell you, is pretty brutal. I figured out a way to get through it, uh, but there's some early game sections that are pretty brutal. But yeah, I'm going to be playing on all amazes super strong for the whole game. And I think a necessary uh, addition to all amazes enemies are super strong is reduced experience from easy fights. You're going to get half the normal number of experience points from being baddies weaker than yourself and sometimes none at all. So if you're so many levels higher than the enemies you're fighting, they actually give you no experience. This is really useful for farming seeds. Because in this game, you can farm stat buffing seeds, which are permanent stat increases. And I'm going to be doing this quite a little bit. And if you have no reduced experience, you're going to be leveling up a bunch. And you're going to be like 2 OP. Um, there, are, there are other ones you could do, like no shopping and no armor. Interesting challenges. But I think for a walkthrough and normal, let, uh, normal playthrough of the game, I don't recommend these. No armor is definitely like a harder challenge, though. Uh, but just for a vanilla hard mode, these two are, like, the standard. Shypox, it makes your character unable to move randomly. That's kind of stupid and very annoying. Ca Townsfolk Talk Tripe is funny. Sometimes the NPCs will, like, tell you little jokes and lies. But the thing is, my only problem with this and the reason I'm not going to use it is because they sometimes, uh, replace the dialogue in, like, serious cutscenes and situations, which is kind of weird and off-putting. It is funny, and there are playthroughs out there that do use it if you want to check others out, but I'm personally not going to be using it. And then Party Wiped Out if Protagonist Perishes, if you hate yourself. Um, yes, it does what it says on the tin. But yes, I know you're applying these settings to my playthrough. Definitely a must on a second playthrough, in my opinion. Okay, and then, of course, in the definitive version, you can play in 2D mode. I'm not going to be playing in 2D mode for the whole playthrough, but we're going to be seeing some 2D mode in the form of the Tickington stuff, which is, like, some 2D bonus content that you can only play in 2D mode. But, yeah, it's going to be a normal 3D playthrough. Uh, it's going to ask us to change some settings. Uh, I'm going to have English voices. I'm a big fan of the English voice actors of this game, though the Japanese I would like to play with at some point, but, yeah. This, I'm gonna play with normal, and because I'm a weirdo, I like inverted horizontal camera because I am not normal. Um, I just, I can't break the habit, guys. It's a problem. And then brightness, I think it's fine. I think it's fine as it is. So, let's go with it. Eventual looks successfully created. I'll talk more about some specifics of the LP and whatever when we get into the more of the gameplay and just running around, but let's just watch this beautiful intro as we begin our adventure. I gotta say, the visuals for these cutscenes they have the Dragon Quest charm, but they're also really stunning. They're great. They've managed to upscale the graphics to make them look great and not lose the... the, um, the style of Dragon Quest.
I get chills still watching these cutscenes. Even though I've seen them before. God damn. <laughs> Look at this animation. Yeah, these opening cutscenes are great. <laughs> And also console players for the first time finally get the orchestrated soundtrack. man I'm telling you <laughs> also let me know in the comment section if the audio volumes are okay I know the cutscenes are quite loud in this game compared to the in-game audio which is kind of odd but yeah let me know if everything's all good After that awful storm, too. However, did you survive? <laughs> oh, you're a jolly one. What's this? Oh, you poor thing. Come here. Come here. Oh, there's no need to be frightened anymore. You're safe now, little fellow. It's beautiful! I'm so happy. <laughs> yeah, there's absolutely nothing wrong with the Switch version at all, man. Like, I definitely recommend the Switch version. I'm still probably going to play it again in the future. But I, I primarily play all my games on PC now, and also being able to record it and make this walkthrough for you guys is my main idea with playing the PC version. So, yeah. I, this also does have, obviously, as you would expect, better quality graphics than the Switch version. It is technically a Switch port, but it runs a lot smoother. Um, and looks a lot better, in my opinion. But the Switch version still looks great, considering how big the game is. Thanks so much, you're a lifesaver. <laughs> and yes, meet Gemma, the most controversial, controversial voice actress in the game. Trust me to lose my headscarf just before the big ceremony. As a Brit myself, I'm not bothered by it, and I think she's very charming. <sighs> so it's finally here, the big day. I can't believe we're going to be climbing all the way up there. Hmm? <laughs> Happy puppy. <laughs> <laughs> Looks like Sandy's keen to lead the way. Come on, best not keep her waiting. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, the soundtrack is excellent. I mean, I could not imagine playing the game with the awful MIDI soundtrack. It just absolutely ruins it. And, oh, I forgot to adjust my controls. Yeah, for some reason, the game, the X button on my controller is the map and the Y button is the menu, which is not what I want. I need to change that in my Steam settings. Anyway, uh, I'm just going to adjust some settings here first off. Uh, yeah, for some reason, by default, the game always displays your draconian quest settings on screen. I don't know why that is. Um, display settings don't show. Yeah, I don't know why it does that, but yeah, you can check which ones are in effect here from the menu. Uh, but yeah, let's go over the menu. We've got items. Uh, this is your item bag, pretty self-explanatory. Every character has their own item um, bag. Uh, but you also have the universal item bag, equipment bag, and then, like, key items. Also, I'm just gonna quickly turn the game, uh, the game music down, uh, a tad. Yeah, I think that's good. It's just a little quiet. You also have the option to switch back to the MIDI soundtrack if you wish, but I don't know why you would do that. That's better. Okay, so, the equipment menu, we're gonna be spending a lot of time in here. 
Uh, I'll go that over that in a bit. Attributes, you can see your stats, experience, uh, your current equips. You can see all this in great detail. Spells, abilities. Yeah, this is a great menu. I'm using this a lot. The gold you have. Magic, we don't know any magic yet. Party talk. Brilliant. I mean, a mainstay feature in Dragon Quest. Uh, we can talk to everyone in our active party, get extra dialogue depending on where we are in the situation in the story. We're going to be constantly checking uh, party talk. And then Misk is all your settings. Heal all. It uses your healing spells to heal everyone efficiently. Tactics is, is swapping your uh, characters from stupid AI bots to actually following your orders. You have tips, info, like story, summary, defeat monster list. This is excellent stuff. Quests, your side quests, and then obviously settings. Battle mode. Yeah, you have the option of the battle mode being freeform fighting or classic camera. This literally, this first one literally just means you can move around your characters on the field, but it does absolutely nothing gameplay wise. It's just an illusion. <laughs> so classic cameras we definitely want. And then speed of battle, you can like fast forward battle. Uh, I'll only be using this if I'm grinding off screen. Uh, I prefer normal. Uh, okay, camera controls, we've already adjusted. Oh, I do want to move, uh, bump up my camera speed though. Uh, audio settings, yeah, you can change all of this stuff uh, as much as you want. Set confirm button. You can have it so depending on your controller, you want what you want, and then claim special rewards. So with the definitive version of the game, you can get this um, these extra items. These are on the Switch version as well. You can get some extra gear and ha the Happy Adventurer set, which is five seeds of skill and five pet pops. These are really good and really rare items. So I'm going to be using these three, these top three, because you have these in the definitive version of the game no matter what. However, if you didn't play the demo, then you won't have these three seeds of skill. So I'm only going to grab the top three because you will always have these no matter what. So yeah, I'll claim all these. You get a, uh, a gear set for the protagonist, as well as unlocking Dragon Quest VIII music. But if I wanted Dragon Quest VIII music, I'd play Dragon Quest VIII. Right, so, yeah. So, speaking of equipment, yeah, the, we got an equipment set for the protagonist. This is default equipment. It is the Dragon Quest VIII protagonist <laughs> gear, and it actually changes his um, appearance as well. You have, like, different outfits. Um, so, just a forewarning, I, I, I'm going to be getting in very in-depth with gear and stats in this game. I have a great interest in it. For sure. Um, so I'm gonna be talking a lot about that kind of stuff, discussing what's best for each character, in my opinion. And I, I would really like it if you guys were involved in that discussion as well. So the big question right off the bat is: swords or great swords? You have different categories of weapon for each character. And I'll go into more detail about this kind of stuff when we unlock skills later on. For now, I'm just gonna flat out say I much prefer great swords for the entire game. Um, for the protagonists. As you can see here, it's we don't have a shield right now. It's a flat-out attack buff. Uh, I personally think greatswords are, are better f overall. Um, but honestly, you, 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 can, you, know, you can do whatever you choose, whatever build you decide to go with for your characters. It's completely up to you. I'm just me going through what I prefer, what I think is the best in my opinion. Um, and yeah, so the Trodane bandana, the Trodane equipment's actually quite good. I guess we'll go into detail of it now. Yeah, we get curse reduction, 25%. Uh, a little charm boost, a little HP boost. Um, I'm only going to equip the bandana, though, because it gives... Well, it gives some MP and some defense and whatever. But if I equip both, it'll actually change his outfit, and you can't change it back uh, unless you take it off. So I'm just going to go with the bandana, because I don't want to have him running around in the Dragon Quest VIII outfit right now. It doesn't suit him. <laughs> so, yeah, finally... I'm not going to waffle on as much anymore without playing the game. I just wanted to go through all the menu and stuff. Uh, yeah, we haven't been up the tour yet, so basically, for our coming of age ceremony in this village, it's tradition that we climb the cobblestone tour, which is this big mountain. So, we're going to do that. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a fun little introductory uh, dungeon. I uh, guess. Yeah, this is a pretty close, tight uh, village, so everyone kind of knows each other. Yeah, 
now. I never let Gemma fall. The symbols on the side of the tour represent the spirit of the land, you know. Yeah, this is kind of like a very important place to them. Alright, when we see NPCs with this icon above them, it means they have an important piece of dialogue or they have a hint of what to do next. Um, if you haven't needed some advice, you still what to do. Have a chat with folks with pretty pink speech bubbles above their heads like me. Yep. And yes, we can press X or whatever button you decide to uh, map it to. So you open the map, which is nice. And we always have a mini map in the corner. Who knows what we're going to find up on the tour. <laughs> we're already getting teased about our wedding, yeah. Gemma is our childhood friend. We're going to be learning a little bit more about her soon enough. Don't wish your youth away, kid. I'm learning that now. Can I not get up to speak to this kid? There we go. Uh, yeah. Don't wish, don't wish your youth away, folks. Seeing you and my dear Gemma all set for your big day makes me proud as anything, both as a mayor and a grandfather. Yeah, I think this is the mayor of the town. Yeah, he's actually meant to be Gemma's grandfather. Yep, we say it was that party talk. This is our mother Amber. Hello. And they cook me a nice dinner when I get back. I'm so hungry. I've been I have not eaten because I was waiting for this goddamn game to install. Yeah, you know what? I'm super annoyed actually. Let me let me talk about that real quick. The Steam version of the game didn't unlock until 5 p.m. I don't know why they decided that. I know it's like a certain time zone, but even then it wasn't a midnight release in any time zone. It was like a 10 a.m. release. I don't know why they decided to do that. Console players got to play it way earlier than PC, but whatever. I, 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 you know, I can wait a little bit. It was just kind of annoying wanting to get this video out on the same day. But here we are, the foot of the tour. Humble folk of cobblestone, great land spirits, hearth and home. That's how it goes, isn't it? My granddad's been teaching me the prayer ever since I was little. He reckons the spirit of the land really does live on cobblestone tour, you see. As long as I can remember, he's been preparing me for this day. The day it would finally be my turn to climb all the way up there and offer my thanks. Yeah, it looks like a long ass climb. <laughs> I just wonder whose idea it was in the first place, sending the village's young folk on such a dangerous errand. What if I take a tumble and do myself a mischief? Well, not to worry. Since you and me were born on the same day, I'm lucky enough to have a bodyguard along for the journey. Oh, yeah, so Gemma isn't going to be doing any fighting. <laughs> Come on, then. That craggy old thing won't climb its... Oh. Uh-oh. Oh, snap. <laughs> hey. Ah! Monsters! I mean, I don't know if you can call them monsters, They're coming but... this way! Yes, the first battle of the game has to be against slimes. Watch out! Couldn't be anything else, right? Yeah, all we have, we now have no abilities and no spells. We can defend these items and change our equipment from the menu in battle, which is super nice. On. Yeah, on hard mode, these slimes actually take more than one hit. Thankfully, though, Sandy actually pitches in. And yeah, Gemma will uh, use items on us. She's just gonna sit in the back and cheer us on. Uh, Sandy will attack randomly. The good thing about Sandy is that she can still get hit and she can also paralyze people. She can still get hit, but Sandy can never die. So when you have these backup party members like this, it's actually really good because they just take, they suck up damage and they're at no risk. And we'll be seeing that quite a lot later in the game. AI party members being damage sponges. Fight, fight and fight some more. Yeah. And there Tough we go. Blighters, aren't they? And we get a medicinal herb. Very nice. Crikey, I wasn't expecting that. Oh, I know they were only little, but I'd have been done for if you and Sandy hadn't been here to help me.
And now we've got to go through that horrible, dingy cave. Just our luck. It's the only I'll way up. I'll you anything. That's where those awful things came from. Well, as long as you're with me, I've got nothing to worry about. Come on, let's get going. All right. So, yep. Yeah. Let's go. Let's explore. Yeah, so you can hold the uh, you can hold the right trigger to run faster. Yeah, look at this place. Yeah, that's the press she was just saying. And yeah, you also don't have to go into the party talk menu. Uh, in this version of the game, your party members actually follow you around on the overworld, so you can just turn around and talk to them, which is really nice. Yeah, around here we can pick up a chest. And it has a pot lid, which is a shield if you're using one-handed swords. So make sure you equip that for some extra defense if you're using one-handed swords. But I'm not. Like I said, I'm using great swords. Yeah, I guess I can talk a little more uh, while we're walking through the, the, the tour. Yeah, in my opinion, great swords are a much better choice for the luminary up until the very end of the game. I mean, he, he's better off, in my opinion, with great swords for the majority of the game. And yeah, you get more defense, so to speak, with one-handed swords and shields. But great swords also have parry chance. And that's not included in your evasion chance as well. So, in my opinion, great swords are still actually better defensively. And there are great swords that actually give you defensive bonuses. So, yeah. Yeah, you come over here, grab a medicinal herb from a tree. And anytime you see something like a, a cliff or a rock, you can just go over and interact to climb up it. Yes, enemies are on the overworld. And what the time is telling us now, or like the game's gonna tell us now, we use a preemptive attack. So, on the overworld, if we go up to an enemy and press the A button, we can get a preemptive strike and deal a little bonus damage to them. Which is nice. Uh, thank you, Sandy, for taking that thing out. Yeah, as you can see, like Sandy is just sucking up that four points of damage from, you know, that could have been hit on me. Um, oh yeah, the good thing about Gemma being in the party is she will also heal you. So generally, don't worry too much about your your HP dropping in this section right here. Although, obviously, you can't always rely on Gemma. There's an AI bot. We all know not to trust AI party members, after all. Yeah, I don't know why. Again, the party members in this game, when they actually permanently join you, are still set by default to AI commands. I don't know why. But thank god you can change it. Anyway, here's a new enemy. Needler. Uh, and... They get the first strike, apparently, even though I made a preemptive attack. Yeah, I don't know how that works. For some reason, <laughs> even if you preemptively attack, enemies can still get their own preemptive attack. Yeah, these guys like to heal. They're a bit of a pain. Okay, let's attack Go that on. one, so... You can do it. Okay, thank god he didn't heal. Yeah, other than that, there's nothing too special about the enemies in this first area. I think... Literally, the Miller and the Slime are the only ones you can fight on the tour. Go on, you can do it. This should bring us up to level two, which we'll actually need. Phew, I'm so proud yeah. of you. Yeah, a bunch of stat increases, and we'll learn the Frizz spell, which is a basic fire magic spell. And yeah, if we check the info section, defeated monster list, and then nearby monsters, you can see yeah, only the Slime and Needler. If there were more enemies, they'd be question mark slots underneath them, but yeah, it's literally just these two um, that we can fight here. And yeah, Sandy's always going to lead you the way to progress, but obviously we want to explore the whole cave. And some pots to smash. Yeah, I won't insult your, uh, I won't insult the viewers and your uh, intelligence by, you know, mentioning super basic Dragon Quest things, like, you know, you, know, you can figure out some stuff on your own, especially if you're familiar with the franchise already. 
I know I'm here to do a walkthrough, but I'm also a very chill, laid-back guy just who wants to just enjoy the game. Because I want to play this game again. <laughs> While still offering a, uh, a good walkthrough of this game. do you think? Oh, not more fog. I've had enough of that in Persona 4. <laughs> Help! Help me! Uh-oh. <gasps> Cole? Ah! 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 That Quick! isn't a Slimer and Eula. You have to help him! <laughs> 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 it's more monsters. All right. I don't really think this counts as the first boss fight, so to speak. But this is like the first Watch like. Out. These guys are a little bit harder than the uh, enemies you fight on on the tour. Uh, there are two of them. I think it's just smogs. Uh, but yeah, you want the frizz spell for these guys. It does a little bit more damage to your physical yeah. attacks. Um, and they also have pretty high evasion to your physical attacks. But yeah, as you can see, they deal a bucket load of damage on hard mode. So, yeah. Thank God that, um, well, at least one of them was attacking Sandy and then Gemma healed me. Yeah. As long as I keep attacking Sandy, then I'm fine. And nice. Paralyzed. Yeah, generally, Gemma's gonna be healing me every... every turn. Okay, I just wanna get rid of this guy. The other guy's paralyzed. If I miss, I might have been in trouble, so... Yeah. Here you go. That's it. Oh, and nice, she healed my MP, so... even better. Go on. Yeah, paralyze him go again. On. You can do it! There we go. Phew. Yeah, not too bad, but you know, if you get a little unlucky, well done. you could actually be in trouble there. I, I'm sorry, Gemma. I only came up here because I thought it'd be funny to jump out and surprise you. But then those monsters appeared. What in the world is going on? I never heard anything about monsters appearing on the tour before. Yeah, the villagers aren't sending us to our doom on purpose. The, the, the monsters being here isn't a normal occurrence. But never mind that now. Whatever were you thinking? You could have been killed. You take Sandy and get back to the village this instant. Y yes Gemma. Sorry Gemma. <laughs> You saved my bacon again. I knew you were tough, but crikey, you really have grown into quite the hero. I mean, to be fair, Gemma, you kind of saved us with those medicinal herbs. Would have been toast. Not far to the top now. Oh, typical. It would have to go and start raining, wouldn't it? Come on, let's get a move on. Yep, pretty grim weather. Oh, yeah, let's go and pick up some pink pine. Yeah, that's a crafting ingredient, I think, or a forging ingredient. There's no alchemy in this game, it's forging. Yeah, previous two Dragon Quest games, we had the alchemy part, which I... I played Dragon Quest IX, that's like my childhood game, it's my first Dragon Quest game. I've played a, a bit of Dragon Quest VIII, I've not finished it though. Um... Yeah, I prefer forging over alchemy, actually. I really, really like the al alchemy, though. I definitely like the alchemy pot uh, in 9. Although, if you've played that game, you'll know what I'm talking about. The alchemical stuff, the end game gear, that was very badly designed. <laughs> but other than that, like, alchemy and forging in Dragon Quest games is always really fun. And in this game, it's great. I'm a big fan. I mean, forging 
like you're always gonna be better off forging your equipment rather than buying it and even if you do buy gear you always want to rework it in the forge usually in the early game i probably won't be buying too much equipment i'm gonna be forging most of it except for like for, i'll probably buy like a few gear pieces in the beginning just so i don't get absolutely slaughtered all right and it looks like we made it to the top i could have sworn there were more sparkly spots, but maybe I'm remembering wrong. Yeah, it doesn't look like there's an alternate path anywhere around here. Yeah, this place looks really cool, like the markers on the wall and stuff. Here we are at last. Oh. It's such a shame about the weather. I was really looking forward to that view. Well, we better say the prayer and get this ceremony over with, eh? What? What was that? Sounds like danger. Ah! There's an angry burb. Ah! Ah! Oh, oh no. So dramatic, I love it. <laughs> Can this bird not? <laughs> Please? Uh oh. Get absolutely fried. Yeah, something happened there, huh? We're alive. But how? That that great big flash of lightning. It was almost like you made it happen. Wink, wink. <sighs> Look, the mark on your hand. Huh? Oh, it stopped. Well, we can worry about that later. All I know is that you saved me yet again. I don't know what I'd do without you. Now, we really had better be finishing up this ceremony. Oh, yeah. We weren't just coming up here to fight monsters and nearly fall off a cliff. Humble folk of cobblestone, great land spirits, hearth and home. Lift your voices up in prayer. Sing it across all our drear. Blessed are we since days of yore. Let it be so forevermore. <gasps> That's better. Wow! Look! It just goes on and on and on. Whoever dreamed up this ceremony must have had this in mind. They wanted to show us how huge our world really is. It really is a big world. <laughs> Let me tell you. I mean, it's well, not like, it. you know. It's all over and now we're grown-ups. Should we head down and tell Grandad and everyone? It's not like a big, you know, huge, like there are games of bigger open worlds, let me tell you that, but the game world in this game is pretty big, and they are very clever with, uh, re- I don't want to say reusing sounds bad, but having you go back to places you've already been, technically, but still keeping it interesting and not feeling super repetitive. Uh, they do that pretty well, so yeah, I'm a big fan of the setting and the world and all the places to explore in this game, it's great. I love it. They'll all be waiting for us at the bottom. Alright. Yeah, look at that, dude. 
Yeah, I don't know. People were complaining about the graphics of this version of the game because this is technically a Switch port and the Switch port doesn't look as good as the original PC release, which is true. It doesn't. And yeah, this game looks not as good as the original PC release, but this game still looks damn good. And this looks better than the Switch version. And in my opinion, I mean, the style of this game, it's not exactly a super high quality graphical style, you know, like super realistic. It's it's a unique style, but I think it looks great as it is. And I'm not, I'm really not worried. This is by far the definitive version of the game. Uh, you should doubt, there's no reason in my opinion to play the original release. Um, even for the, like, the slightest graphical change. The amount of content and stuff, it's absolutely not worth playing the original anymore. Uh, and I assume, to be honest, there's probably gonna be a mod for the PC version that upscales the graphics, I imagine. Maybe it won't be, but even if there's not, it's not a problem. To me, at least, anyway. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand how people are whining so much about it. Like it's, a, it's a Dragon Quest game, dude. Yeah, it's cold. The kid will be safe. Yep, we fought off the fog. We're used to that. Better let our folks know that we did it, and that we didn't die along the way. <laughs> Gemma keeps trying to walk into me, I don't think she's realizing that I'm stopping to talk to people. <laughs> Indeed you are, my dear. Thank the spirits for that. When we saw lightning striking up there, we got a little worried, I have to tell you. <laughs> well, I never. Sounds like it's nothing short of a miracle that you made it back in one piece. You'd be correct. Well, there's no doubt about it. The spirit of the land was watching over you. Now tell me, my dear, how was the view from the top? Oh, it was wonderful. I saw the sea stretch into the horizon and the sunlight playing on the water and... Oh, I've never seen anything like it in my life. <laughs> You're true cobblestonians now. Only we have the pleasure of looking out over the world of Erdria in such breathtaking fashion, you know. Well, you're still young, and the day may yet come when you decide to leave Cobblestone behind. I hope our little ceremony has opened your eyes to a little of what may await you out there. <laughs> now, it's high time we were heading back. I'm sure your mother is eager to hear how things went, young man. Don't keep poor Amber in suspense. Yeah, I apparently got a dinner waiting for me, too. <laughs> Come on, you. Home time. Hmm. Here we are. This is Cobblestone, our hometown. And yeah, here we go. Well, we get, I'm mean, obviously gonna get the Steam achievements as well, but this game also has the accolade system, which is like its own in-game achieve achievements. Way more accolades than there are like trophies, the Steam achievements, whatever version you're playing. So they're really nice, like unlockables for, for doing certain stuff. I'm, I'm a big fan. Um, so many is all done. Yeah, follow the paving stones, you'll soon find your way back. Yeah, or if we follow the uh, the stone path, then it leads us to our house. But yeah, considering Cobblestone is quite a small little, you know, self-contained town, there's actually quite a lot to explore. However, I am going to explore most of Cobblestone in the next episode. For now, I'm just going to go straight home. 
Um, gets the next cutscene. Yeah, I'm gonna be making these uh, Dragon Quest episodes an hour long. Considering that for a while they're only gonna be coming out once or twice a week, while Persona is still going on. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna make these. I'm gonna make these videos about an hour each. So yeah, in the next episode, which will come out on Sunday, we will explore Cobblestone in much further detail and try and find all the stuff we can find and talk to everyone. Although, I guess the, the NPCs probably have some some extra dialogue, in fact, now that you know, we've, come, we've come back from the tour. Yeah, like Cole here. Yeah, we're grown-ups. Um... Yeah, this game has a lot of changing dialogue depending on um, depending on what point in the story you're at. Like something as little as triggering the next cutscene can change the dialogue options of the entire town. <laughs> yeah, the church over here. The church is where you save, in case you didn't know that. So, pretty important place. I'll go nosing around for treasure in the in cobblestone in the next video. I don't want to start it now and then carry it on after. And yeah, if you are using draconian quest settings, then it'll be marked on your profile. Uh, I wish this game gave us more save slots though. It, it gives you nine, which is still good, but I want more. I mean, I had 16 in Persona 4 and that wasn't enough. It's absolutely not enough. But I, uh, considering Persona 4 had a lot of, uh, you know, it has all the endings and changing dialogue options and all that, shouldn't have to worry about having multiple save slots as much. Yeah, for some reason in the town a lot, these dudes' horses just like to park themselves in the way of certain paths. I don't, it's not to block you off from anything either, you can literally just go around them most of the time, it's, it's kind of funny. Alright, so like I said, let's actually go home now and uh, we'll start the next cutscene. I just wanted to see if there's any if people say anything different. Why we just come back. <laughs> yeah, it's a very charming little village. Yeah, see that sparkly spot over there? Yeah, apparently, I mean, I don't know all the differences from the vanilla version to the definitive, because when I first played, I played the Switch version, which is the same as this. I know they changed the sparkly spots for materials. They made them a lot bigger and more noticeable. So you may Ooh. notice that if you only played the original. Here's my little soldier. Well, not so little anymore. I've heard all about your big adventure. Look at you, all grown up. I hope he wasn't too much of a bother, Gemma dear. I saved her life. <laughs> of course not. Quite the opposite, in fact. You would have been proud of him. We got attacked by a monster at the top of the tour, and I ended up hanging onto the edge of the yep. cliff by my fingertips. I thought I was done for. But you'll never guess what happened next. That mark on his hand suddenly lit up, and a bolt of lightning hit the monster! What did you say? That funny little mark? Lightning flying about the place? <laughs> Goodness me. Here I was hoping he'd turn out nice and ordinary. Uh, but it seems his grandfather was right all along. She knows something. Well, we've been putting this off for long enough now. You and me need to have a little talk. <laughs> That's never good. Here. This belongs to you. Oh. Your grandfather asked me to give you it once you'd come of age and climbed the tour. The truth is, there's something I've been keeping a secret all these years. Something I've never told another soul in the village. It's... how can I put this now? Um... Well... He said you're... You're the reincarnation of the Luminary! 
What? <laughs> oh, don't ask me what the old fool meant, dear. I haven't got the foggiest. All I know is that your grandfather said you had a special destiny and that there was something you had to do. He said that when you came of age, you were to head north to the capital, up there in Heliodor, and show that necklace thingy to the king. He seemed to think that if you did that, all would become clear. Clear as mud, I shouldn't wonder. Anyway, the long and short of it is that if you want to find out what this is all about, you'll have to leave Cobblestone and head over to Heliodor. Leaving town already, huh? Crikey. <laughs> well, I can't stop you leaving, I'm sure, but you won't be marching on an empty stomach. Come on, dinner. That's what I like to hear. <laughs> <laughs> she just dropped a bomb on us, but dinner's still important, you know. Yeah, it looks like we're going to be taking a trip to the Heliodor region. Oh, well, no. We're in the Heliodor region already, but Heliodor Castle, that is. Oh, I got an accolade for collecting ten types of items. I don't know what I picked up during that cutscene. Oh, I guess the key item. Yeah, the precious pendant. Um. Yeah, I'll worry about the, the seeds of skill and pep hops later. But yeah, right now, it's actually in the middle of the night. In our home. Let's go for a little walk. Night air always does me a power of good. Yeah, that's a little hint. We're going to go out and explore during the night. You can find an extra set of plain clothes in your wardrobe. Though I don't know why you'd need them. Because you already have some by default. And they're kind of the worst piece of armor in the game. Well, maybe not the worst. I don't know. There's probably worse pieces of armor in the game, actually. But I guess these are the weakest defensively. And you'll never need more than one. But yeah, we're going to be finding a lot of treasure and bits of gold and stuff in pots. So. I'll be trying to show off getting all the treasure in the game. I'm going to have some nose for treasure memes, if, if you know what I mean. But I'm not going to go crazy over like getting like one pot that I can't find or stuff like that, you know. Same with monsters. Like I'm going to try and get all the monsters in every region that we visit. But if there's one I just can't find, and I'm just not gonna waste, I'm not gonna waste your time doing it on video, and I'll just do it off screen. Hopefully, this is a series we won't have to edit too heavily because, you know, this game, unlike Persona, shows each enemy on the on the field that you're about to fight, and you know, you know, you know what I'm saying. I can be a bit more selective about what I fight on screen. But yeah, oh, Gemma's just out here too. Sleep either, eh? Yeah, looks like we were thinking the same thing. You remember this tree, don't you? I got my scarf stuck in it all those years ago. There I was, crying like mad, and there you were, running round trying to help me get it down. <laughs> Some things never change, eh? You know, I always imagined we'd spend our whole lives right here in Cobblestone. That's why I was so surprised by what your mum said today. All that stuff about you being the luminary, that reincarnation thing. <sighs> I remember the story my granddad told me. Once upon a time, long, long ago, the world was terrorized by a horrible monster. But then, the Luminary appeared and saved the day. When it was all over, the Luminary turned into a star. And he's been watching over us from up in the heavens ever since. Yeah, this is an important story. This little tale right here. It's very important. <laughs> That's his star, right there. <sighs> How can you be the Luminary too? I... I just don't get it. I know. That's what you're going to Heliodor to find out. I understand. Really, I do. Listen, we should both be getting back. Everyone will be wondering where we've got to.
Goodbye, old friend. Oh man, you have to say goodbye like that. Oh. <laughs> we just stand there. <laughs> Finally fall asleep. Yeah, I feel really sorry for Gemma. I mean, she just gets left behind. You know, her childhood friend is just torn away from her suddenly. <laughs> hey. There's the outfit. Well, just look at you. You don't scrub up too bad, you know. Only wish your grandfather were here to see you. You won't forget him, will you? He was a fine, upstanding man, the pride of the village. You could do worse than try to be like him. Well, I'll however never forget you turn out, I'm sure you'll find a way to overcome whatever lies ahead. A mother knows these things. Oh, by the way, I've popped a little money I'd saved for a rainy day in your pack. Don't spend it all at once. <laughs> Why don't you visit the village shop before you head off to Heliodor? You'll need some supplies for your big adventure. But don't take too long. The whole village is turning out to wave you off. <laughs> yep. Just letting you know we're going to be leaving, so look around. So yeah. Here we are. The real outfit. I, I like the Luminary's outfit. It suits them. That's why I don't like wearing the full Dragon Quest VIII Trodane set. I don't think it suits this character. But uh, anyway, yeah, I'm going to end this video here. This is all for part one of my Dragon Quest XI-S walkthrough. I hope you guys enjoyed and you stick around for future episodes. I'll probably just run to the church off screen so I can save uh, just my controller settings. Because, yeah, I don't... It's still going to display X's open the map in game. But it, if I change... You can't change the controllers in game. You can only change keyboard settings in game, which is annoying. But I can change it in Steam itself. Um, so, you know, it is what it is, but yeah, I'll just rush to the church off screen and then I'll come back here. So yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. If you are new, please make sure, so sure you subscribe and help us get to 100 subscribers. Please share this video with a friend. If you think they are thinking about getting Dragon Quest 11 and with like a guide. And yeah, thank you guys so much. I will see you next time. Goodbye.